Hello everyone, my name is Peter, welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. Today we're going to be taking a VFR flight through the mountains of Corsica. Now in my last video I showed you how to plan a VFR flight using Bing Maps and the uh, inbuilt flight planner. And today I'm going to show you a slightly different tool called Little Nav Map, which is a very excellent piece of free software that you can get by going to the link in the description below. And it essentially streamlines the whole process of planning the flight and creating a .pln file which you can then import into Microsoft Flight Simulator. I do intend to do a full tutorial video on how to use Little Nav Map, but right now there are some features which don't quite work with Microsoft Flight Simulator. They are working on them, they're going to be coming in the 2.6 release, you can track the issues on the GitHub. But it does work well enough for now that I can show you a flight with it, even if I don't give you a full tour of the of, of the lab map itself. Okay, in this flight today we're going to be flying from the airfield of Peretta in the northeast of the island, Lima Foxtrot Kilo Bravo, and we're going to be flying southwest through the mountains of Corsica, past Montecinto, and then down to the capital of Ayacho, where we're going to be landing at Napoleon Bonaparte Airport, Lima Foxtrot Kilo Juliet. And so let's get started planning this. The first thing we need to do is right click on the departure airport and I'm going to set it as the flight plan departure. Now this is the first place where we see that the uh, the tool little lab map is not quite interfacing properly with Microsoft Flight Simulator because if I press this button here this should allow us to select a start position for the flight like you would in the simulator. So you could park on the ramp or choose the runway you want. Unfortunately that isn't implemented yet, so we just have to stick with whatever it gives us because, as you'll see later, if we try to change the departure position in the simulator, it will actually reset the entire flight plan. So we are a bit stuck with just what it gives us there, but that's okay. We're going to be flying from uh, Peretta down to Ayacho, and we can set that as the flight plan destination. And so now it brings up this, uh, this line here, which is a direct line, and it has a couple of very useful features on it, the first of which is that it tells us the distance and the bearing, and it also has this elevation profile which tells us the terrain underneath and will tell us the minimum safe altitude for carrying out this VFR flight. Uh, the way that it calculates this is it just looks straight under the line of the route, and so we can influence this by routing ourselves through the valleys, which is what we intend to do. So. I want to stay fairly close to the um, direct line because obviously the closer you are to the direct line the more efficient your route is, but I do want to fly past Montage into here, so I want to fly down this valley. So actually I'm just going to start by placing, I'm going to left click on the line and move it over to this lake, uh, which is the Lac de Calacucha. Uh, so that's that's why I want to I want to go my way. Now we need to work our way forwards and backwards from from here to work out how we're gonna get there safely through the mountains. So uh, I'm gonna start by going back towards the start and it looks like there's this valley here that we're going to want to follow which uh, seems like the next obvious waypoint will be this road junction here so I'm gonna place a waypoint there. And then how to get to the airfield from there well it seems like the obvious thing to do would be to come up to the road junction here and then follow this valley up to the entrance there. Brilliant. So we've, uh, we've done the first half of our routing, we're going to fly southwest from the airfield through this valley to this road, down south a bit, until we pick up this valley to the west, uh, down to the lake next to Montecinto, and then from there, well, it looks like it looks like there's a quite an interesting pass up here, what's this, the Col de Vergio, so that looks good, we'll go over that. And then from there, uh, it looks like what we want to do is come down following these roads, maybe to the coast here, and then we can fly over down to the airfield from the coast. So we'll do that. Uh, we've come from this pass over here, and what we'd like to do is we'd like to come around this mountain here to this pass down, to this valley down here, and from there we can follow the road all the way down to Sojourne. I'm just going to move this into the sea. And then from Sojourne we're going to come and it looks like we want to pick up uh, the road on the western side of this hill and then we can follow that hill uh, down 
all the way into the airfield pretty much. Great, so this is our routing, taking us through the valleys of Corsica. I hope it's going to look good, uh, we'll see how the sim handles it. Um, one useful feature of Little Nav Map is that you can see it's named it Waypoint 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. What we can do is we can right click on those and we can say Edit Flight Plan Waypoint 3P4 and I can, I can name this something useful. So I can say this is a valley um, and I can say that this is the, um, what's it called, Ponte Leccia, is the town under where we'll be flying over. And then uh, over here we're going to be turning right next to a uh, river and a uh, minor road, so I'm going to write that in. River plus minor road. And then we're going to be following this valley southwest over to the Lac de, de Calacucha. We'll add that in. I'll just put Lac. Hopefully we get some nice views up to the northwest. Then we're coming over the Col de Virgio here. Up the Col. Let's put the full name in. Why not? And then down to this turning point, which we'll call um, uh, Ridge Line End, because that's what it is. And then we're going to come into this valley. Road Valley. And now we're going to come over to the sea. This is Sajone. And then we're going to come over around this hill here. So I'm going to again say that this is a hillside. And then it's into the airport. Okay, brilliant. So you can see that the names come up in the left hand side here. And these will come up in the simulator, which is very useful. Uh, the simulator does have a habit of renaming one or two of them to uh, Time Descent uh, and uh, Time Cruise, uh, but at least most of them should be should survive it. Okay, so having having made those adjustments um, by travelling through the valleys, you can see that now actually the terrain under us tops out at uh, just under six thousand feet, so we should be safe um, planning a cruise at six thousand five hundred. And it looks like the highest point beneath us. Uh, is well this one doesn't count we'll be in the valley so yeah it looks like the actual highest point beneath us is going to be the Col de Vergio here where the ground elevation if you can see in the, the bottom here the ground elevation is uh, 5,000 feet so we need to be 6,000 feet at this point uh, but at the start we're going to start at 2,500 and I guess we're just going to gradually climb up through the valleys and this Col de Vergio should be the highest point in our flight Okay, so I've got the route planned out. Uh, we're going to say we're flying at 6,500 feet. I'm going to press File. Um, save Flight Plan as PLN. And I've already done this one, so I'll just save it there. I'll overwrite it. And uh, and we're ready to go. That's as, that's, that's as easy as it gets. Just one final thing before we jump into the sim. Um, you can actually pop this map out into its own window, which if you're like me and you have two monitors, this is an excellent thing to put on your second monitor. Now, the little nav map does have the ability to connect to the simulator and show you a little icon of where you are on the map, which is very handy. The only problem is that currently there's a bug in the sim connect, which means that it creates quite a lot of stutter in your game and kind of makes it unplayable. So I've turned that off for now. I, I'm not I'm not connected in the little nav map to the sim. So we are just doing this VFR. I'll have to be navigating my eyes. There's no cheating with an icon on the map. But you can do that if you want to. So I'm going to move this over onto my other monitor and uh, then we'll move into the sim. Okay, I'll switch over to the simulator and we're going to go and initiate our flight. I'm going to go into the world map. I'm going to press load safe. Load. And if I go to my desktop where I save that flight plan, I'm going to go Peretta to Navarre Bonaparte. And here we are. It's all in with no fiddling around with the .pln files yourself. Excellent. Now, you'll see that it's defaulted us to departing from runway 34. And that's fine, but you'll see that if I do try to change the departure point, the rest of the flight plan just gets deleted. So we are kind of just stuck with what it gives us. 
There is a way to change where you start by editing the .pln file yourself, but I'm not going to bother with that today. So I'll just reload that flight plan. Okay, and we're going to be flying the DA40 TDI. Uh, flight conditions, I presume it's going to be quite nice right there now. So we'll, we'll take whatever's live. And that's it, we're good to go. So I'm going to press fly and I'll see you on the runway. <laughs>